What is an ISFP? These four letters stand for introverted, sensing, feeling, and perceiving in the Myers-Briggs personality typing system, which was based on the psychologist Carl Jung's theory of the kind of functions. An ISFP is someone who prefers to use the kind of functions introverted feeling, extroverted sensing, introverted intuition, and extroverted thinking, roughly in that order of frequency, and we'll get into what each function does a bit later. But first, you've probably heard that the ISFP is emotional, artistic, intense, and someone who has unshakable principles. In reality, any type may possess those characteristics while an actual ISFP might not. Why? Well, because those are personality traits, which are characteristics that can change over time and can be consciously developed. Think of it as the content of personality. The content can change depending on what you put into it, which may include culture, upbringing, personal experiences, and so on. Carl Jung was not focusing on personality traits, but personality types, a classification system that does not change over time. Since it is fixed, it has to offer enough flexibility to account for the variations within, the variation being the diverse contents of personality traits. So think of personality type as the structure that is capable of containing a variety of content. Certain structures may tend to lead to certain contents, but correlation does not equal causation. So what is this structure? In short, it's your system of information digestion. It's how you tend to perceive, retain, organize, and prioritize information. This is denoted by your cognitive functions. At no point should these cognitive functions be confused with universal, biological, and executive functions like the five senses and planning for the future. All right, now let's get into it. The ISFP's strongest function is FI, which is oriented inwards and inhabits the emotional domain. FI is a judging function, so it has to do with how the ISFP prioritizes information. In this case, as an introvert, they spend a lot of time checking in with themselves and their inner world and may neglect or spend much less time being attuned to the external world, whether that's to sensory delights, other people, or external rules. This may ring especially true for the ISFPs out there who feel a bit more on the clumsier or spacier side despite their auxiliary extroverted sensing. They spend most of their psychological time looking inward at their personal feelings. They're extremely perceptive to their own emotional response, whether that's to objects, people, experiences, their other feelings, and even lines of reasoning. This doesn't mean that the ISFP is an over-emotional wreck all the time. Subtle emotions are involved as well. There are not only emotions of happiness and sadness, but shades of mild annoyance, being slighted, a sense of justice, or the feeling that something isn't quite right. Over time, the ISFP collects a vast array of personal feelings and knowledge about these feelings, which acts as a compass to help the ISFP with their decision making. Once again, this doesn't mean that the ISFP is constantly doing what feels good. There's an immense complexity to the feelings. For example, the feeling that something doesn't feel great in the moment, but it feels like a necessity and thus doing it would provide relief. Of course, feelings of right and wrong or justice and injustice are also par for the course, giving the ISFP personal values and convictions that are emotionally driven at the core. Let's also talk about what the ISFP is not. They hold their personal feelings near and dear to heart and do not like it when external pressure tells them to change these feelings. This could be a local custom or even just a friend trying to cheer them up through emotional means. For example, through platitudes and cheerleader-esque encouragement. Generally, they see emotions as still rather than in motion. Their collection of feeling belong in a museum. New artifacts occasionally come and go, but the structure is generally static. Feelings are to be preserved and analyzed, not flung around towards people in certain situations. Though it isn't externally obvious, the ISFP actually has a good intuitive knowledge of the appropriate ways in which to display emotion. However, they generally dislike using this skill and would much rather, as they see it, stay true to their inner feelings at all times. Situations where the ISFP has to suppress or fake their emotions always leads to internal friction, which can appear awkward externally. Compounding all of this is the ISFP's other introverted function, NI. 
An eye is a perceiving function, governing how one retains and structures information. An eye is vague and overarching, focusing on the big picture rather than specific instances. Being an intuition function, an eye focuses on what's not concretely there, so not the chair and the table and the room, but perhaps why they're there. Maybe we're expecting guests. The unspoken meaning and intentions behind the concrete facade. Being introverted, an eye subjectivizes these elements. In order to make sense of all the conceptual information, it forms patterns and trajectories. Sometimes an eye plays with themes, thanks to its visual nature, but I think most notably, an eye maps out cause and effect relationships, linearly tying together time. An eye isn't very strong in the ISFP, so they don't have the most comprehensive of internal conceptual meaning. This means that they might not tie everything they do to a central and subjective meaning or purpose. They might also not have the far stretches of their future mapped out. Since it's a lower function, NI follows the direction of FI. This means that they tend to spend more time picking up ideas and patterns in the fields that they're interested in or passionate about. For example, seeing the intentions behind a close friend's behaviors, but not seeing many patterns in a book that they've already lost interest in. They may also be prone to visualizing the future based on their current desires or moods. For example, perceiving an extra bleak future if their mood is bleak. Unfortunately, amplification of their current mood may lead to anxious or sad feelings if they do not see a way to escape their future projection. Together, FI and NI make up the ISFP's unique inner world. They create the overwhelming sense that all emotional experiences and conceptual patterns are all related. This gives the ISFP strong intuitive inklings or gut instincts about certain situations that often turn out to be correct, even if they can't explain why they feel that way. For example, the ISFP may have been lied to a few times, and there was the same physical tell each time. And while that connection wasn't consciously made, the tell, the lying, and the general scenario all got retained in the same general pattern or theme by an eye. So the next time someone talks to the ISFP with the same physical tell, they'd have a seemingly inexplicable feeling that they were being lied to, and they'd probably be right. Although they might not consciously realize that the tell is why they feel this way. Moreover, an eye makes the FI book of values more vague and future-oriented. It usually won't be nitty-gritty details that make the ISFP feel a certain way. It's the general situation, or more often, the progression of events and their perception of the future. It's an interesting dynamic because the ISFP will feel deep certainty, thanks to their NI, but tend to be unable to linearly trace their feelings to specific concrete things since their concrete perception is extroverted instead of introverted. This often makes the ISFP seem a bit mysterious or guarded on the surface while radiating a quiet conviction. Instead of verbally rambling on about their feelings like the INFP is likely to do, the ISFP tends to express their FI in more concrete ways like with actions, including physical affection, sometimes art, be it visual or performative, and so on. Since their intuitive perception is weak in the first place and all of it is oriented inwards, the ISFP can be seriously unaware of external conceptual alternatives. This problem is actually compounded by strong SE, which I'll explain shortly. SE is the ISFP's first and most active point of contact with the outside world. SE is a perceiving function, experiencing the world as concrete, immutable externalities. Immutable not because things can't be changed, you can smash a rock, but it'll still be a smashed rock. This is in contrast to SI, which has a subjective interpretation of the rock, over time creating a subjective image of an ideal or standard rock in the mind's eye. To SE, this particular rock is this particular rock. Being extroverted, it doesn't retain anything, so there's no sense of certain objects being out of place. There's no sense of this rock or this food or this movie not fitting in with others in its category. Each sensory experience is perceived in the here and now in its own right. With this comes an emphasis on manifesting, which separates the ISFP from their INFP counterparts. While NE is content to look at the world in a multitude of ways, the SE of ISFPs sees the world as it is right now. They're grounded in the present while hoping to manifest their desires at some point in the future. 
This makes the external efforts of the ISFP a bit more visible and easier to pinpoint. They may come off as slightly more grounded, perhaps showing an interest in fashion, food, aesthetics, and other concrete luxuries one can enjoy. However, drifting in the internal world feels so comforting that left to their own devices, the ISFP may forget to use SE without prompting, even though their SE is rather strong. The strength of the ISFP's SE is evident when they're concretely manifesting their FI inner self, for example, decorating their room or dressing in a way that perfectly represents who they are. It's also evident in their keen ability to observe things they're interested in, like the behaviors and emotional cues of others. The ISFP is attuned to reality, but often they don't do a lot to impose upon or change reality unless they use their TE, which we'll get into later. So because they feel confined to the current reality and their rather sure-footed vision of the future, which is often based on the current reality, the ISFP may feel trapped or hopeless since they can't simply believe in another possibility when nothing concrete has changed. Although the ISFP is attuned to reality, they don't often apply the skill in service of their lives. The ISFP often forgets their gifts of presence, practical perception, and the living of everyday life, even though this is ideally the first thing to do if they're ever stuck in a rut. When things feel gloomy, they need to explore new avenues of reality through new people, places, and so on. They need to take action and do different things, literally carving out a new future. Because the ISFP's perception is naturally attuned to the concrete present, it can be hard to seriously refer to the past for lessons, information, and so on. It may be hard to take past instances into account when the present opportunity and future vision seem too promising. Often, the ISFP has a good, even detailed memory, but these past events feel depersonalized, a gray snapshot compared to the vivid present. Tying the ISFP together is their inferior function, TE. TE is a judging function using external information, usually empirical logic, as a means to an end. TE structures the external world based on what makes sense in the moment, based on what works. Although TE is the ISFP's weakest function, it shouldn't be underestimated because the weakness of the inferior function usually creates an insecurity, a preoccupation. Repression leads to fixation. Many ISFPs have a love-or-hate relationship with TE. On one hand, they're afraid to use it since any sort of conforming to external criteria and rules would feel like a front to their unique FI. On the other hand, when life isn't working out so well, they crave the ability to use TE like an expert. Generally, when things don't go right, their lack of TE is the first thing they blame. Many ISFPs have experienced the feeling of missing out on opportunities, not meeting their potential, and being disillusioned with the world since it doesn't live up to their rigorous inner ideals. If only they could prioritize what's objective and logical and do what works, but then they wouldn't be ISFP. This is not to say that ISFPs can't apply logic at all. On the contrary, many are quite good at it, excelling at isolated logical reasoning with their dual perception, their practical SE and cause-effect oriented NI. However, outside of isolated instances, when we're talking about the messiness of real life, the ISFP almost never prioritizes logic when it comes to decision making. Insecurity often leads to overcompensation. Ironically, they may even criticize other people for slip-ups in the TE realm, for example, not grasping the rules properly in a game. Unless the ISFP is under a lot of stress, this usually only happens within the field of expertise of the ISFP. They could have mastered a way of doing something that they perceive as objectively logical, whether that's a procedure or their job or hobby. When other people fail to be as adept, it reminds the ISFP of their own insufficiencies in other realms, prompting the attack. Another way the ISFP could overcompensate is by using logic to justify emotionally based decisions. Combined with their concrete SE observations, they might even come across as logical at times. Being an introverted type with NI, they could possibly store many lines of reasoning together into something that at times even resembles TI or an internal logical framework. But be not fooled, it's simply the ISFP trying to appeal to TE by using it in conjunction with their FI. With time, they'll be able to strengthen their TE, but it'll still follow the lead of FI. 
Hey guys, so now I'm gonna talk about my personal opinions of the ISFP. First of all, they're very honest. I know we associate authenticity. If you hear a meowing or a groaning sound, that's my cat. I'm sorry about that. She has a very really distinct meow. Okay, I know we associate authenticity with FI, especially high FI, so especially INFPs and ISFPs, but I actually find that this whole individuality thing is more visible in the ISFP because I'm an INFP and with my NE, I find that it's very easy and natural for me to have an eclectic array of interests and style, like dressing style, but with the ISFP, they have in e polar and that along with fairly strong ni it really crystallizes and converges everything together to this common and quite intense theme so not like everything in their life revolves around this one thing but their life can be said to be thematic like they're more likely to stay the course than the infp if they choose a job, they'll probably go with the job. If they choose a room style or <laughs> aesthetic, everything converges around that theme. So they can have multiple themes in their life, but the peripheral things revolve around that theme. I hope that kind of makes sense. Whereas for me, everything's, everything's its own thing. All of this together, I find, makes the individuality of the ISFP more striking and bold. Okay, speaking of bold, I find that when it comes to expressing opinions that are not the most socially appropriate or opinions that may be controversial, the INFP, I would actually love to do that, but I find that I can't help but see different ways that it could be construed. So I tend to cut off the rough edges with my speech. Like I wouldn't say it's sugarcoating, it's more like cutting off corners, but I find that the ISFP, oh, they really don't mince words. They will say exactly what they mean. And I really admire this about them. I think it's a great quality. I wish I can be more like that. And sometimes I can, but usually, I'm afraid that other people might think that I'm saying this out of malice or out of attention seeking or out of a desire to stir the pot, so to speak. But the ISFP with their NE polar, I find that they are not thinking of all the ways that it can be construed. They're thinking of the intent, the true intent. I feel like NI is so much about truth and it's so awesome. Like if NI is a core and E is the different interpretations, like I'm actually imagining the elephant. Oh gosh, like, do you know that cartoon where different people are viewing this elephant from different windows and everyone sees something else? So I feel like every window is an aspect of in E, but like the actual elephant is in I. So ISFPs are focused on the true intent and then they're maybe focusing on how it's most likely to be, be construed. This quality is pretty much visible in all of the Gamma Kwasha, so people that share the ISFPs kind of function, so also ESFPs, INTJs and ENTJs, but I find this the most visible in ISFPs because they have stronger FI. So they tend to have all these opinions and preferences and emotional inklings about all sorts of different things and they might express themselves about them so it becomes more visible. Speaking of expression, they are not as verbally expressive as the INFP, so they might not actually express all of these things, but when they do, it's very straightforward. So because of this, I find, I actually personally find them a bit mysterious. Like, I know ISFPs in real life, and they tend to give off this, like, semi-intense aura. 
And I would try to get close to them, but it can be a little bit hard. It's not because they're ISFP, it's because we're both FI dominants. I find it hard to get close to INFPs as well because even though we're perceivers, we're quite judgy inside. FI is so judgy. <laughs> FI can be judgy. I'll say it like that. It, it can be judgy once it's developed in conjunction with the third function, so like SI or NI. Yeah, I feel like I'm more judgy as I get older. So like, they're prone to having these emotionally charged first impressions with people, right? So I don't want to get on the ISFP's bad side. I guess that's why I'm like slightly intimidated, but I have become friend acquaintances with a couple of ISFPs in real life and who knows, we might have gotten closer but I no longer live in the same city so I hope to meet more ISFPs soon and become close friends. Yeah, okay, uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching and if you would like to get typed by me, I do have a typing service for that and it's on my website, kind of 8com Okay, see you next time.